Hello and welcome to another episode of This Expat Life. And today I am super excited because I've got a very, very dear guest in the digital studio, Cynthia Mayorga. Cynthia is actually a very dear friend of mine. We met in Brazil when we were both working and living there as diplomats. And just like me, Cynthia has taken some big decisions afterwards. She also quit her diplomacy career and now works as a market analyst in Spain. So a big difference and I can't wait to talk to her about these big moves in her lives and these changes and what has worked well for her to navigate so much change at once. Welcome Cynthia. Hi everybody. Hi Amanda. Thank you very much for inviting me to this. I am very excited. This is my first podcast so I'm very excited. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm also super excited to have you here. Um, and out of curiosity, I mean, I know where you are, but for our listeners, where are you calling in from exactly? I am right now living in Seville, in Spain. Mm-hmm. I am living in Triana. I want to say the neighborhood because I love my neighborhood. <laughs> so oh. I'm here since uh, 2021 that I came in August, two years old already. So yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So, um, Time flies. I know. Two yeah. years. <laughs> yeah and you left brazil also in 2021 right yes exactly i left uh, my diplomat uh, career and now uh, yeah be, a few months before coming here and then i came here to visit like europe and stuff i was dating a, a person and we met here to see if everything will work mm-hmm. and it did and yeah. we're here two years more <laughs> amazing i'm supposed to be here like three months since and then not, nothing but no <laughs> <laughs> isn't that all how it always goes <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah well I'm super happy to have you here because uh we, you and I are not only friends I also coached you inside of expert life school that I yes. was happy with and we both share a love for personal growth we listen to the same podcast we read yes. the same <laughs> and we have a, a similar history when it comes to diplomacy and living in Brazil so I thought it would be super interesting to interview you today Yes, I think I I have a lot to share, so I'm very very glad that I... (laughs) Yeah, awesome. So maybe let's start at the beginning. I mean, uh, not the real beginning, but uh, a few years ago, you were living in Brazil, um, and now you are in Spain. What motivated your decision to quit your diplomacy career and to make a change? So for for instance, for beginning, I was like, um, I was not in the same page as the government uh, principle that I was working on. So I decided to make a move and try to see what else is for me there out there. And I started Europe because I have uh, my friends living in the Netherlands. That was my first choice, by the way. <laughs> it was not Spain. <laughs> but I really wanted to tr- to get a shot there. And my friends were telling me, we are going to help you to come here and to see if you can settle down. And I decided to, to do the shot. I, I, t- it, I didn't quit. I just took on like an excedencia. And, and that mm. is like a, uh, an absence of leave for study. Oh, yeah because I was doing a master online. So I took that option of leave to think and to see if I was, what it was going to do like for, I mean, I, I was not like really trying to see about like the long term, but yeah. I, I am here two years later. But uh, at first it was just to see what I want to do. Mm-hmm. If I wanted to keep moving with the government or if I want to do something else. That's what my first uh, choice. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what you've been doing so far. So you've you've taken a different yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. How- so okay. after this, I, I was la- studying and abroad. I didn't have the visa to work. So I was like there just studying. And then I decided to stay with my current boyfriend that I, we were like trying to figure out what we were going to do. And I decided to stay and to see if I wanted to have a job here. And it worked. That was like the first move. It worked. After a few, it wasn't easy at first. Yeah, uh, that's why I joined uh, Expat Life School too because I was trying to reach something like make me comfortable and to see the keep going, keep going. Because even though it's like ah, oh, you were a diplomat and it could be easier, you already lived abroad before. Even though it's not, it is not easy. It is not even though you have all the options like in in Brazil that they did everything for us to yeah. be there. It's not the same thing. Even though I have my boyfriend here, it's not the same thing. So it's like you're carried away. You're like doubts. Am I doing this right? Am I doing this? I want this because you really don't know if you want this at all. So it's a lot of um, mixed 
thought and you need to be careful what is the ones that you really want and the ones that are just an impulsive thing yeah. i just wanted to difference the between those uh, thoughts mm -hmm. so yeah so right now i'm just trying to i'm right now i'm working but i i spend like like a time frame that i was not very comfortable with my decision but mm -hmm. now I am. I mean, it's like, I think it's the process of every expat, I think. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah. So I'm really glad to hear that you found your place now and really settled yeah. in. Yeah. Um, I am. I am. Yeah. You and I had it's some still problems. work every time. It's constant work. It's not yeah. something that now you are super good. No, I think it's yeah. constant work because you're not from here, even though I am not so attached to my country. I love my country, but right now I, I don't want to live in it's not that oh, I can live there no I'm sure that I can also live there but I want to live elsewhere for now I want to see the world I want to see whatever it is uh, out yeah. there before going back if I ever want to be back yeah so also that makes it a little bit easier definitely so you say it's a constant work right you're you're not there 100 percent because you will always be the foreigner so what exactly. um, how are the challenges for you now living in Spain for at first, I was like, uh, socially speaking, it was one because I am very social. I need people mm -hmm. around me. I'm not, I like to be around people. So it was at first a little bit uh, easy for me because of my boyfriend. So I have his friends. But at the end of the day, I didn't have my group. I mean, I was talking to my friends uh, abroad and on um, video calls and stuff. And it was the connection. But I thought I need to do something here to like uh, have my own community here. Yeah. So I started doing that and that I think it was one uh, of the things that helps me a lot, like trying to find a community. Also, I joined the expat life school because of that. Mm -hmm. I needed to find third people that were doing the same thing as me that, okay, it's not that I, I wanted to say that someone told me, ah, you're not alone. But um, yes, that like the refreshment of, okay, people struggling to keep going. This is not easy, but it is also the process is very nice. I mean, even though the... You don't know exactly where are you. You you want to keep going. You have yeah. uh, like the motivation and and the confidence to keep doing when you have people also struggling the same thing. Yeah, so for that sure. helps me a lot. Like, yeah, uh, the challenges were that, but I I think I had it very easily because I'm very also very social. Yeah. So that for me was very helpful, very helpful. And it also the city made it it is very easy to make friends mm. in we I live in the center too so there is a lot of things that I'm lucky to be where I am to have a lot of friends because I have other people that don't live nearby so it's difficult yeah. to transport blah blah so I'm very lucky and also I try you know I did the effort to get out exactly yeah speak for people yeah so yeah I know I know you made a lot of effort into it yeah and yeah. so uh, mm -hmm. I can understand, like, if you are living with a local and hang out with his friends, they they are nice friends, but um, one, they're not your friends, so there's already exactly. some quality in there. But also, like, they don't know what it's like to live abroad, so there's another exactly. to it that makes it difficult. Exactly, that's what I thought. It was like, that, I mean, is their friends? I know they are super nice with me and stuff, but they is the group, and it, and it's, it is a group that I still have and I like. But also I needed my support team that is like, okay, I am not alone here. And right now, my most of my friends that I met outside this group are foreign because yeah. of that. I mean, of course, it's because I thought in a, I, I, I had in a, in a Facebook page, oh, someone wants to have a drink and eight girls came. Oh, yeah. It was like, it was like I just said, oh, in a Saturday night, I'm bored. So I someone wants to have drinks and eight girls. I mean, everybody's also looking to connect. Yes. Yes. So that's important to know. I said, wow, eight girls on a Saturday at seven and at, at an hour later we were meeting. It's wow. We want to do the effort and they also, they're trying to do the effort to meet people. And locals are not that open here. I mean, they mm -hmm. are, they are very welcome, but they have their own groups. So yeah. it's, I am in because of my boyfriend. So it's yeah. easy for me. But yeah. I have older friends that they don't. So it's difficult to get in if you don't have like someone inside or something like that yeah exactly so it but right now we have a really nice group i mean all foreigns but really nice <laughs> nice good 
And so I can also imagine that if you were living abroad as a diplomat, I, did you live six years in Brazil? I mean, five years. Five, five years yeah. in Brazil. So quite some time. Um, I know. Yeah. It, it, diplomat life is also very nice. Like we didn't have anything to complain about. I mean, sometimes we had, but overall it was a good life. And then you moved to Spain as a student, um, also from a country perhaps where a lot of immigrants go to Spain. Yes. Um, yeah. Exactly. So I can imagine that that is a completely different context in which you operate. Can you share something about the challenges from that? Yes. I mean, it's different because, I mean, fortunately, I am, uh, I didn't come here to have a job and to support my family and stuff. Luckily, I have that all arranged. But and even I had the help for my boyfriend too to come here because I was come going to the Netherlands and it was very difficult to stay or to have a, a stay there. Uh, yeah. Like a community to stay there. In Spain, it was easier. So that's yeah. why it's not that I, that's why I stay, but it was easier to try at least. So uh, I didn't have like the challenges to come here. I mean, I just decided to sell everything in Brazil. Yeah. To sell all my stuff, my car, everything, to have my money and then to come here to try it, to see whenever my money runs out, I run out and come back to, to see a plan. Yeah. You know, and, and I did that. I wait for, because I have the residence to wait, uh, because with my partner, we did the, the pareja de hecho, like uh, we are together, living together. So um, I have to uh, a process to stay. And in that process, well, I was very anxious because I was like, in the middle of everything in the limbo more or less yeah. i didn't know yeah. so that was very hard for me and that's where i look for 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 you for for your ex life because it was like i was very anxious like i have never been i mean i think in some way we are very anxious in some parts like very high and low but yeah. this makes me like i was Quitting my job, I was living abroad and I was uh, ha starting a relationship with the living with a boy that I was just dating in Brazil. And all of Mexico was like too much for me. So I was not thinking straight. I did want something like makes me down to earth, like, okay, focus. Even though you get a lot there anxiously, like thinking, what, what am I doing? What, what if this is not what I want? What if this is not, doesn't work? But at the end, it's like, okay, do it. If it doesn't work, you do something else. Those kind of thoughts, like I wanted to have. So the challenges were like, um, I don't know if I had like, I told you like challenges, challenges. It was more personal, like yeah. uh, fear, like fear of everything, fear of of doubts of everything. Even though I was already like very clear on my thought that I wanted to do this, even though you doubt. So those kind of things were like challenging to me. But at the end, I, I had people here that also helped me. I mean, I had people that you community your friends also. It's very important to me. And uh, I have people to like to tell me, oh, come, come on, come, let's do it. And if it doesn't work, that's OK. You come back. That's yeah. another thing that I have that I I don't have kids. I don't have someone responsible for me. That's also it's very, very, very good that you, you have that red that you just have to think about yourself and to see what the hell you want to do. Yeah. And what, where is the path that you want to go and try this path. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. Yeah. And those, because if not for me, it was like before I used to say, oh, if I don't do this, if I fail, what am I? No, I cannot fail. This time it was like with more thought, it was like, no, that's okay. It's not a failing. It's just a, it's just a try. If it doesn't work, that's okay. Yeah. It's not failing. Like if you don't want to stay or something. Yeah, but at the end it turns out very good because I'm I love to live here. I really love. At first it was a little bit an adjustment to to adapt like the life and everything, um, where to live, well the things that I want in the apartment with my current boyfriend. But at the end everything works out. So. Yeah, yeah, great. You said uh, earlier like oh the fear and stuff aren't the typical challenges. They're more personal. But I think personally that those are the typical challenges of when you move abroad. Yeah, it's you true. Have outside challenges, right? Not having the right friends or the job or whatever, and that's all super valid. But internally, so much more happens. And like you said, everything for you was up in the air. You gave up everything to start a new everything. life you were in this waiting process you weren't sure if things were going to work out for you and that wasn't just one thing that was like everything in your life exactly 
And exactly. um, that limbo state, I'm sure a lot of expats recognize this. I've also been in limbo state. It just kills you from the inside. Exactly. It's love this anxiety, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, it's a challenge to keep thinking that you need to be patient. This is a process. The country's process is something about the job too. I had a lot of, uh, still have uh, some issues because I don't know what exactly what I want to do. So I don't know what am I looking for to exactly to be, I didn't want something here in Sevilla because of my, I don't live, I am not from here. Whatever it happened with my boyfriend or whatever it is, I need to have like a remote job because I can come back in five seconds. I mean, like I don't have to do an arrangement with my presential work if I do this here. So yeah. I, everything was like, I need a remote job. I re, Instead of settle down, it's supposed to be like, not to be, my boyfriend used to say, you're with a food here and a food in Nicaragua because it's like, you're in the middle of both because, oh no, I cannot stay here and have a presential work because what happened if I had to go back? Yeah. So you're always in the main, yeah. in the, the limbo, even if you have everything to settle, yeah. you're always in the limbo. Like, yeah. So that's something... I need to like come still. I am still working on that. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm silly with the food there and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. The one foot in and the one foot elsewhere. I mean, mm. so many people recognize this. Um, I, I know. Also, remember when we both started in Brazil, we both had long distance relationships, right? With yes. people outside of Brazil or at least not. Yes. In so we were also, I think, with one foot in and one foot out. Exactly. Until it was the we same. broke off. <laughs> exactly well, it was the same thing it's like okay I, I have to do all of this because i have to be there in nicaragua even though if you have a settled job and you're mm -hmm. coming like for your country and stuff even though you're like i think everything when you're always when you're abroad even if you're settled yeah you're thinking back in your country or yeah. your family if it's there or yeah friends or whatever so absolutely okay so how did you deal with this limboness like i already hear you say you are controlling your thoughts so what yes. are some new thoughts that you thought and what are some other things that you did okay i need to have uh, my i deal with having a purpose like a uh, short-term uh, purposes like for instance, okay, I want to go to the Netherlands to visit my friends and go to the Tomorrowland, for example. So that's my purpose. I have six months to do that, and I'm going to count. Not, I'm not like doing right now long-term things. Like it's been since I came here, I think I have not like uh, have a plan for my next five years, for example. No, I am doing everything in a short terms to make me feel a little bit more. That's my my experience being more controlling my thoughts. Okay, this is your next step. So what are you going to do for your next step? So you have this time to do this. So I that's my my thing, and that's why also I wanted to have the community to see if that's uh, something that I could learn from the expats, the, what they were doing, yeah. like trying to do because I think sometimes they were uh, some of the person that I was talking here, they were already settled and trying to see in five years I'm going to do that. I'm like. I don't know if or what am I going to do this year. Yeah. In five years, I'm going to want to have a house or want to have a, something else. So I'm focusing on the like baby steps. Yeah, exactly. I really like this approach because uh, if you're in limbo, you have no solid ground under your feet or everything. Exactly. There. So I like that. And then uh, the long-term goals can feel super overwhelming because if you don't know where you'll be, how can you ever exactly. figure those steps out? So I really like this approach of having like shorter term right. goals, giving you a purpose, a clear direction. And then exactly. from there. Yeah, that for me, the, the, the little details are important because that's the thing. Even though it's a travel, and even though if you're visiting your mom in their country, it's like you have that thing. So you focus on doing yes. all your routines and all your stuff based on this. And after that, you will have another one. And after that, when you feel more settled, you will figure out if you want something more in a long term. Because right now, I am very happy where I am, but I don't know if I want to stay here forever or for yeah. a long term. I'm happy today. So yeah. I'm acting, my, my actions are uh, how I feel today, not how I'm going to feel tomorrow. So yeah. the action that I'm doing is like, today, this is what I'm feeling. See, if I tomorrow I feel the same, another thing, I will pass that bridge until, yes. <laughs> until then. Were you always like this, like living with your feelings of today and taking action on that today? Or uh, did it was it something that you had to learn? No, I have to learn it here because uh, I think... Oh, before I used to have, I used to be in relationships all the time. So before it was like, 
that was my purpose thing. I was in a relationship, so whatever it was, I was doing a plan with my partner to do this and to do that. So yeah. right now it was, even though I have a partner, I wanted to do it myself. What a scene yeah. I was going to do, because before I used to do it like in couples. And now it's like, even though I'm abroad and of course he's from here too, that also helps that I'm doing this on my own. It's not that my partner, we came together, that is yeah. different. Yeah. I came, he's from here, he's in his uh, city, he's in with his family, his friend. I am the one who came here. So I am the one who doing my, my space, my things by, I, I have to say this, like exactly like the baby steps I'm taking is not uh, both of us. It's just yeah. me. Yeah. So that's also important. Like my space. Yeah. Something like, even though if I, I will stay with him and we will be together, but I need to do that, uh, realizing that what Cynthia is going to do. I think it's yeah. important. Yeah. I think it also gives you a sense of like ownership over your life. You're not dependent on a relationship. Um, exactly. Before you were in relationships, but it was your choice to move abroad. So you weren't dependent on them in a way. Maybe, exactly. emotionally, of course, yes, but not in other areas. And in this case, it's a bit, a little bit different, right? So it's very different, yeah. but also it's because of the experience with the relationships. Not, I was always very, very independent. I didn't like, I am, maybe I have issues having. Uh, like someone and say for the rest of my life because mm -hmm. for me I don't want to get I don't have that thought to get married or to have yeah. kids or to have a family, but I want to be with someone I want to have someone with me so that may might help to be yeah. like something like that not that attached in everything with my partner but I've been in relationship the, my whole life also so it's yeah. like it's been part of me I've been I mean if I, I maybe I will say single a uh, year and then I always been in relationship in long uh, relationship five years five years five years so yeah in a long term you're also <laughs> reinventing yourself in a way now as a more independent I mean still in a yeah. relationship but we're also more with your own uh part basically I think also you can get to know yourself a lot better when you're like this like a bro mm -hmm. you you know how to react you know what makes you uncomfortable what what do you want to do before you do it like I used to do a lot of people pleasing and now it's like, maybe I don't want to go drink because yeah. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't want to, I want to stay here and watch a movie. I don't mind to say, look, I want to stay home today. But before I used to do it like, okay, I have to do it because if not, I will lose the friends that I already did here. And, yeah. and, and maybe they will go out with someone else. And then I will not, that was a pressure for me because before yeah. I, when I was meeting people, I have to go meeting people because yeah. if not, otherwise you're not Exactly. Then they will forget me and then yeah. I will stay here. I, the loneliness part was not for me. I didn't feel that lonely here. Mm -hmm. I was because of my, I was with my boyfriend and one for me when I'm with my partner, it's not, I don't feel that alone, but I was feeling like um, a little bit lost. Yeah. Not alone, lost. That's it. Like you didn't know where to start, where to begin. If I want to do this or that uh, was a lot of, in the plate like for to to choose to decide yeah. because they say oh, but you have to decide you need just to choose it's not that easy yeah to to do to say what you want to do in a city i would never think about seville before before i mean it's not that oh i want to go to live to seville it, it yeah i was flowing in the in the limbo time i was flowing and it got me here also because i wanted to because of uh, my partner but it's not that I said I want to live in Seville, you know, so yeah, I am adapting yeah. also. It's a beautiful city, but it's different. <laughs> yeah. Now you are the biggest fan, but it wasn't. I am the biggest. Plan. I am yeah. the biggest fan of yeah. Seville. <laughs> I love it here. I want everybody to come visit me. <laughs> I will soon. <laughs> <laughs> Please. So, yeah, actually what you say about before that you were more people pleaser and you would go to hang out with friends because you didn't want them to forget about you. I think this is something that a lot of expats recognize as well. And maybe not because they're people pleasers, but this fear of like, oh, but I only have so few friends and exactly. I don't lose them or I, I I didn't meet anyone this week yet. So I, I cannot miss out on this uh, meetup. But what they do is that they sometimes go against their own character. So exactly. if you are an introvert and you go to big group events. Well, you saw me in Brazil. I'm an ambivert. I'm not yes. a 100% introvert, but I sometimes said no uh, yes, to yes, hanging yes. out with you because I know I need to save my energy. 
exactly you were extroverted latinas and it was just too much for me exactly why well, i'm so extroverted but sometimes i don't yeah. want to have that and i thought that on you the first times i it was very funny because i would go oh okay she the dutch girl she's always like trying to be put the boundaries and i'm like that's interesting i saw that yeah. like the first years i saw you but i didn't like even put it in my thoughts you know it's oh. like something no but now that i'm here it's like something that i want i told my friends like Sometimes like I don't want oh Thursday night we you want a beer and and maybe I did it one in the morning but then afterwards I didn't want to so I yeah. said look can we rain check because today I want to stay in and see a movie I don't I will not say like an excuse big excuse for yeah. them to oh she cannot yeah before I used to do like oh my grandma is in yeah. the hospital now it's like oh I don't, I really want to stay in and yeah. see a movie you know to catch a movie I don't want to go out so let's rain check. Yeah, so, that's good. yeah, 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 that's it's growing a lot. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Adulting. And it feels very strong within, I think, when you yeah. uh, talk like that from uh, from that kind of place. And um, I think a lot of experts can recognize that they say yes to some things out of fear, out of fear mm -hmm. of missing out or fear of not having friends, even though it doesn't give them energy or even though they secretly want to do something else. Yeah. But expert life puts a certain pressure on you to keep it up sometimes, you know, to exactly, but that's good because what will happen if you don't? And I think it's, um, if you really want to thrive abroad, I think it's super important to follow your own needs and to make sure that you mm. can meet your needs. And so, if you are an introvert, that means that you, um, recharge your social battery by being alone. Um, exactly. and if you're going to events, you're basically burning uh, the candle at both ends. So I think if you really want to lead an authentic life, just like you are doing now, I think it needs to start from your place first. What do you want? And to then exactly. align your outer world, um, with it. So just like exactly. you're, being, you're being really true to yourself and saying no, and people respect it and you still have your social time and your movie time, you know? Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah that if, to be true to yourself is always good even though if you want to make everything right and oh no i have to do this effort an effort yeah. doesn't mean you have to like go there like even though if you don't want to like do the effort is try to do it, it happily like uh, yes. what do you want to like uh you are like motivated to do it not like yeah. like oh i will have to do it because yeah. if not i will not no, it's, it's different. I so agree. And sometimes we don't take the effort because we because fear is blocking us. And sometimes yes. we don't take the effort because really we don't want to. And it, it can be difficult to see the difference between the two. We don't know, not always know what it is. But exactly. I, I personally believe the more you uh, act on your own character and the more you get to know yourself, you also start to see that difference between a true, I don't want to do this and um, uh, more like, oh, I have to do this, you know? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's also something that we talk a lot about a lot in Expert Life School. There's a lot of talk about yes. your needs, uh, but also I from remember. <laughs> yeah, also what you say, like it has to come from a happy place. And uh, this is also something that we talked about in Expert Life School. Yes. I really think joy should be your priority. I mean, for exactly. everyone in the world. But it's driving you. Yeah, it should be also for as an expat, because I think in our Western society, it is already so busy and, and, and serious enough. And we sometimes yeah. forget about our own joy. And even when exactly. there's so much coming at you, and actually I'm really interested uh, to hear from you, when you were in this limbo land, yeah. was it easy for you to stay connected to your joy? No, it was not. I mean, I think it was the first, I mean, every time we, I had limbo lines in every stage of my life when I was started working and stuff, but this, limbo stage at this particular age keep more because you were I am 37 years old and well when I came here I was 35 so I was like in the I quit my job without quitting my job then I been I I had a year to see if I have to move on this or I have to go back to my job so yeah. that was a lot of pressure for me that but that's why I feel in limbo in a long time and uh, I didn't know how to, in that, in those moments, there were moments that I, I was feeling very, very deep that, I, okay, the, the hole is very deep. I don't know how I'm going to get mm -hmm. out of this because the thoughts, uh, you cannot stop them. You cannot stop them. We can stop them with booze. We you can go with friends yeah. and get drunk and yeah. maybe that way you sleep the whole day. And no, it's not yeah. like that. I mean, yeah. you can do, for me, I can do that one week and afterwards that I cannot feel still doing yeah. that. 
but also you can block, you can paralyze. I get very paralyzed. I mean, it's like I procrastinate a lot because I don't know how to to handle the situation or want to face the situation. So yeah. I, that was my 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 uh, mechanism of defense. Like I I, I paralyzed, but that's why I was very and I couldn't like have my joy inside. But then like the details were like going for a walk with my dog, for example. Yeah. Like start like not like five minutes because I was just going to walk with him to poop and everything. No, I'm going to do a two hours walk that I love to do this in the city. Like the, the priority prioritize details that I love. That's what I yeah. start doing. Like and also the um the expert life school when I have also I heard that I remember a Brazilian girl that was in Portugal that yeah. she was uh, struggling. And I, I thought, I, I, it's not that it makes me feel good that was, she was doing bad, but it makes me feel like I identify myself, okay, she's there also from Brazil and she's struggling. She speak the language because everybody told me like, when I'm speaking, oh, but it has to be easy because you speak the language. Yeah. I, I, I am here in whatever place and I don't speak the language. Or, or maybe it's not my, my first uh, language. And your, yours is Spanish, so you'll be fine and blah, blah. And then when she said that when she was in Portugal and she was struggling and also she was her, it was for me something that, oh, I think I want to contact her or maybe I know that uh, this is like, okay, this is life. You need to go keep going. Yeah. Also, it makes me feel a little bit mo like um, motivated or, or support. Like, yeah. that, I mean, that's why I joined Expert Life School exactly for that, to see, oh, there is other people going to do this dice sometimes sucks but you will keep going and be constant with your details yeah. prioritize your joy with little things yeah that works yeah. for me like yeah. going right. for a smoothie hey that's my joy of the day i like, yeah. did it because i love smoothies for example yeah yeah that's exactly stuff. so yeah you follow basically small things in your life that can give you mm -hmm. joy that are not big they don't have to cost a lot it's not a big goal you have to work towards for first exactly you achieve them and knowing you, and it's something that you very briefly mentioned also at the beginning of the conversation, I know you also love your routines. Yes. So, um, did that also help you in that limbo phase? I did, but I it was a long time for me to have a routine here because mm. I am very, I, I create my routine also with my partners. I mean, I like to have more or less the same schedules, go to bed at the same time and stuff. Yeah. I was doing that. So it was for me a little bit hard to have my own routine mm. because I didn't have like a purpose inside. I was in a, in the last year, I was in a staying mode, like paralyzed mode that, okay, I'm waiting for my residence. I cannot do anything. So I yeah. was like, literally like not having a purpose, just having, okay, when I get my residence, I have to do this and this, but right now I cannot do that. So it was like for me to be patient, to be not anxious. That was part of my limbo. So, yeah. um, I don't know. It was uh, difficult to handle, but I think also having the purpose to have my residence afterwards that I, I okay, you have this uh, purpose. It's not that you're doing nothing here. You're waiting for this process and yeah. then you will have your things coming around. And, and I did that. I mean, after work, I started working three weeks later. So yeah. And that also, for, for me, for example, work in finances is the move. The driving for me okay because I that's my okay I have to be in work and I have to be have an income yeah to have my purpose like yeah. for me because for example there are people I have friends that want to have a couple I have one friends that have they want to have children want to have friends that wants to travel more I want to have a stable job mm -hmm. and from that have all my the things that I like I mean that yeah. is a few things so that was for me the center of the, yeah. the thing of my worries yeah yeah, so it gives you a purpose, but also probably a lot of worries. <laughs> yeah, a lot, exactly. Yeah, I, I'm in the same boat. I mean, now as an entrepreneur, it is uh, definitely different from when I was a diplomat, when you a lot of cash gets sent to your bank account every single month. Exactly. And now <laughs> it is very different. And uh, I've started to see myself also getting more, a little bit more worried about my finances. And um, I still live at home. So I mean, in my home country, so I feel safe. Like I know I've got my mm -hmm. safety net here and in terms of uh, social benefits and stuff. And I know my way around. And plus I can 
always find work here. I'm a hard worker. It doesn't matter. There is going to be a job for me, for me here. But if you're an expat, you know, it's so much different because maybe you cannot get all the jobs because of your visa mm -hmm. or because of the language yeah. barrier. Um, maybe there's dependency on a partner. Um, you yeah. know. It's also maybe you don't get the benefits that I think that also depends for some of the countries. And also you don't really know, you know, you just feel more of an outsider. So there is less this safety net uh, that you cannot see, but that you always feel in your home country. You don't exactly. have it here when you live abroad. Exactly. And networking is very important. Like, yeah. and, but also the being the diplomat helped me a lot through that. Like being mm -hmm. international relations makes me like here, I do the same thing with my Friend, uh, boyfriend's friends or people I meet is like, oh, I need to uh, to see which companies are because I don't know anything about Europe and for yeah. or Spain. Like, yeah. Even though if I want to work outside Spain, I cannot because my resident from here. So I have yeah. a limited like also uh, work space. And so it's a lot of things that you have. To, I have to figure it out. But still, the first, the main thing is what I want to do. It's not yeah. the outside. The first thing is yeah. what I want to do, where I want to perceive what which path I have to choose in order yeah. for me to be happier or whatever. But yeah. I think also happiness is um, when I do that, like the details that I told you, like the leader things mm -hmm. makes me happier than a big thing. They're having the perfect job that pays yeah. me. I don't know, because we already had that in the diploma. Yeah. We had the, the perfect life. They're supposed to be like, we have taken care of everything. They take care of our home. They take care of everything. But at the end, you're not feeling well to say, okay, this is worth it to keep, yeah. to keep me here. That I I felt like no, I this is this is worth it, but I have to do something else. Yeah, that exactly. even though I was very stable because I that's what I'm looking at right now, like stability that I used to have, but in my own terms. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. So it's really coming from the inside out. Exactly, exactly. Oh. It's important because sometimes it's like every I hear people tell me, why did you quit the diploma of the uh, job why did you uh, quit your diplomat career yeah how the hell you're paying so good you have everything you travel the world but it, yeah first it's not everything like that is that there is a lot of things inside that sometimes our diplomats are very happy and they will pursue your, their career forever and i'm very happy for them I, I have a lot of diplomat friends and they are very happy with their career but for me it was another um type of my country is not the same thing as uh, other countries too yeah. every country has their own uh, things but I decided that it was not in my in my principles to stay there that's why I pursue something yeah. and also personally I needed like to travel personally the world to see what else is there to choose to try okay yeah. maybe this is not what I want I want to go to the diplomat work maybe that would be my thought before but no I knew that when I packed my things and I sold everything, I knew this is my my thing that it will be hard, but I, this is something yeah. that I wanted to do. Yeah, right. yeah, I really recognize that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have different drivers. For me, it wasn't so much about my principles and the country because you know Netherlands is all pretty good, but um, there was definitely there was a calling for something more. And my job was very ego pleasing. My ego loved being a diplomat. And mm. um, and I loved my life in Brazil also really uh, more than just my ego. Brazil I know, was but it was I amazing. Yeah, but I didn't see myself working as a diplomat, uh, as a civil servant, basically, uh, for the rest of my life. And there was a, a bigger calling for me. And like you say, at some point, you just, you know, take a decision, you pack your bags and you go for your new path and then you'll see what comes exactly. out. But if you don't try it, you never know. Exactly, exactly. It, it's something that for, for at least not to say, oh, I regret that I didn't do it. I did it yeah. and I maybe it will be hard and maybe this was not worth it or everything. And I will, I don't know, say I want to go back to my country last year when I was in the limbo state and I was like crying literally every day that I'm not very, a cry. I'm not a crier, but yeah. I, when you're like in a space that I don't know what to do, yeah. you, 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 of course, you, you get out of your comfort zone. That's yeah. another thing. Yeah. Like, getting out of your comfort zone, it takes a lot of courage. Even though if you're motivated, because I was like yeah. very sure of what I was doing, selling my things and stuff. But even yeah. though what it doesn't work, the doubt is always there and you have to control yeah. what you're doing and not to make you, no, maybe I will stay here forever and I will not try anything. 
now. Yeah, your your mind wants to keep you safe. So your mind will always try to keep you in your comfort zone. So it's really exactly. tough to rule your mind. <laughs> yeah, but it takes a lot of courage, even before, in, in the middle and afterwards. It's yeah. always, that's why I say constant work, because yes. it's not that, okay, after this, I would get this point and then everything is good. No, every day, that's why every little detail is, should be a joy. Yeah. Because it's every constant work. Yeah. It's not that you will have, okay, I will now finally relax. And no, you will have another thing that you will want or you want to pursue or you want to be yeah. happy about. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. Okay, um, maybe I think it's time to round up this interview, but I have two questions for you before yes. uh, I take you off the hook. Uh, the first one is, well, you participated twice already in Expat Live School. Yes. Um, yes. What is the, your favorite part or tip or exercise that you did or learned that you still use to this day or that still crosses your mind i think the part that i really like is i have before um uh, expat life school i didn't know where to put my thoughts i just was in my head so uh, journaling i mm. started journaling yeah so also the podcast helped me a lot i was also with you remember i was always uh, please send me podcasts that i want to that was before when i was in my limbo state i wanted to have like something that okay everything's going to be all right and i think the expert like the, like i told you the community i wanted to have the connection with people abroad also for me to tell them my experience or like to like in a in a serving thing like something like you're you're not alone this is also and also to have it back that that i learned but journaling for me like uh like writing my thoughts what i was anxious about what is like to because sometimes even though you're anxious you don't know what it is you don't know what is exactly the fear that you have in so what is the why this is fear is getting to me right now what is the trigger yeah what i have to control so all the stuff like that journaling makes me like more to know the details or exactly what is the yeah. the problem that I'm having yeah. in the moment, yeah. you know. So yeah. that's why I really that's why I'm going to be in the third one. <laughs> oh yay! <laughs> if I can, because yeah. I really like that uh, exercise. Also, the about not to worry. I mean, to have that community to not uh, feel by myself. Also, yeah. I think that also makes me like to have the support, even though it's a uh, support. Then you say, ah, but it's a support on, on the computer. Yeah, but it's there. I know yeah. it's there. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, and also what you said about the journaling and the fear, like in Expert Life School, there are a bunch of videos about your mindset and limiting beliefs. And we also used one of the group sessions uh, on really exploring the beliefs that were holding you back in some situations. And exactly. it is so good to sometimes really... Uh, analyze your thoughts to really understand oh actually this is causing what I think exactly if I change that big belief then I can think other thoughts that will generate other kinds of actions and that will give me a different outcome exactly so, yeah. exactly to to try to because sometimes exactly you're in the middle of everything you don't know exactly what are you what are you feeling so that for me it helps me a lot to say okay this is what I'm feeling this is what I am I want to do to make it better. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Okay. And then uh, the final question that I ask all my guests, and that is, what is your number one hack, a product, a mindset thing, a habit, whatever, um, to make uh, life abroad easier or more fun? For me, it's going on walks. Like, mm. for, I mean, I, I really, 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 really like about walks and podcasts when I'm going with this headset with my dog to walk. Yeah. Because, okay, in, in Nicaragua, in Brazil, it's not a place where you can walk. No. You're always with a car. So that's for me was super, super different. Like in, I have never been in a place living where I can walk to the supermarket. I can work to meet my yeah. friends. Never in my life. This is the first time. So that's for me was something that I took and that it makes me like, that's the number one hack that I have. Okay, I yeah. feel inside. Okay, I go two hours to walk. Oh, yeah. I have to meet my friends. I'm going to say, oh, I'm here in this bar. Inside. You want to come here to have a beer? And yeah. that's like uh, to be outside for that, that I can walk in for me because it's something that I didn't have. If someone yeah. is here, but that already have all this thing, maybe said, oh, maybe walking and what made something that I did all my life. But if, if you can have something like, you didn't have in your home country and here you can and you really really like it 
Do and it. I exactly. I took it all the way in. That for me was the thing. I have never walked in my life many, many times. So every yeah. day in here I walk. So I really yeah. like it. Awesome. That's my yeah. my my hack to have someone something that you use you cannot only do here and not in your home country and take it over. <laughs> yes, I really like that one. Yeah, and I <laughs> definitely also did that in Brazil. Uh, yeah, yeah. Even driving a car there and seeing toucans flying over. I mean, that for me was already so special. So I remember. Yeah, I love your going love for the those nature. Trips. Yeah, and also I really like that uh, when I when we were in Brazil because in Brazil. It's also Latin America, so we I didn't used to walk to anything, but you you really liked it also, Jessica yeah. from Canada also really liked it about the 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 trilles to go on walks to yeah. go everything on walks and I really oh that's something that you guys have here, so I really liked it. And then when I start uh, living here, it's something that I yeah. really love now. Awesome, yeah, and that's the beauty of living abroad. Like you uh, you change and you take the good things from the new co culture. Exactly. That's a really pro for me, like a uh, pro and cons, like this is the number one yeah. pro. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Cynthia, thank you so much for this interview. As always, I love talking You're to welcome. you. You're welcome. Me too. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you much yeah. for Expert Life School that I will be keep going. Thank you very much yes. because you've been helpful. Great. So um, I hope uh, we'll meet again. <laughs> yes, we will. And for everyone who is listening or watching, Expat Life School starts this Monday, the 16th of October. So if you want to join Cynthia and all the others in Expat Life School, then sign up today. I will add the Please link. Please sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ciao.